I uh, want to invi invite uh, uh, Kobayashi-san from the Japan Foundation to say a few words of welcome. Thank you so much. Great pleasure. Please. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Tatsuaki Kobayashi, Acting Director General of the Japan Foundation New York, and I'm very honored to be here to make a brief speech. Okay, so I prepare the draft. <coughs> so distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I make a brief speech for today's panel discussion, please allow me to ask all of you to take a moment to share our deepest condolences for the victims of the Japan earthquake, tsunami, and disaster on March 11th. And also, I wish to express sincere gratitude to the American people for their kind concern and all the heartfelt message to Japan. We know that so many charity events and supporting activities have been held and are still going on here in New York and all over the United States. All of these actions have set a tone and send a strong message to the Japanese people. Thank you so much. And of course, Asia Society has also taken the lead in response to the disaster with their event, Japan Town Hall Meeting, looking ahead to recovery on April 4th. Co-presented by Japan Society, this was one of the earliest events of its kind in New York. The meeting had a strong impact on both the wider intellect, uh, intellectual and professional community of New York, while further promoting the support of Japan. Thank you so much. And today, I'm uh, truly excited and also a little bit nervous in front of such a distinguished group of panelists. It's a great personal honor for me to be here as well. Needless to say, and uh, uh, as mentioned, but Professor Motoyuki Shibata is one of the most energetic and influential translators active in Japan. Through his translations, many Japanese, including myself, have come to know the works of some of the most talented contemporary American authors, such as Paul Oster, Stuart Dybeck, Stephen Milhauser, Barry Uagno, Richard Powers, Stephen Erickson, and of course, Rebecca Brown, uh, to, name, to name just a few. We owe much to Professor Shibata in deepening our understanding and appreciation of contemporary American literature, and I hope we can all share in this appreciation today with you. Uh, actually, I have so many words to the distinguished panelists, but uh, uh, my colleague strongly asked me not to tell so much because every audience is waiting for the panelist discussion, not mine. And I also waiting for the panelist discussion. So maybe it's time for me to, uh, uh, to end my speech. But finally, I'd like to thank again Mr. Michael Robertson and Asia Society for organizing such a wonderful event here in New York. The Japan Foundation New York is truly proud to be a co-organizer of such an important panel discussion. I hope that all of you enjoyed today's discussion and afterwards, please rush to buy a copy of Monkey Business, which Professor Shibata initiated. I found several copies over there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kobashi, Mr. Roberts. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, everyone uh, who uh, uh, made this possible. Um, I'm not going to uh, mention specific names because, I, because if I do that, I always leave out somebody important. <laughs> so I just say, uh, I just uh, want to say uh, thank you for everyone. Th thanks, everyone. Um, I run, uh, as, as, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Robert said, I run a literary uh, quarterly called Monkey Business in Japan. And uh, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, introduce uh, two of my favorite authors who uh, regularly appear in that magazine. Uh, both uh, Ms. Kawakami and Ms. Brown are wonderful writers with a, uh, with a voice, uh, with a distinctive voice of their own. Uh, Ms. Kawakami writes sometimes uh, realistic stories about male-female relationship set in contemporary Japan. And she also sometimes writes uh, fantastic stories with uh, uh, human-like animals and animal-like humans in them. But either way, read a few lines, you always know it's by Kawakami, by that distinct voice of hers, that is at once elusive 
and haunting. Likewise, Ms. Brown uh, has written uh, in, a, in a realistic manner uh, about her own experience of helping uh, AIDS sufferers and her own dying mother. And she also writes quite intense love stories, sometimes uh, 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 with uh, uh, almost hallucinatory quality, and uh, which is uh, 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 rather f uh, uh, apart, uh, far from a, a realistic tone. But again, either way, read a few lines, uh, you know it's Rebecca Brown by that voice of hers, which is, again, you know, equally haunting. <laughs> Did I say or do something wrong? I, I also have a poltergeist, too. <laughs> um, so uh, today, I'm starting by asking two authors to uh, read a short passage uh, from their own work. And uh, uh, the, the other one is going to read a translation of that text. So uh, which one would you like? Uh, so how about, yeah, how about uh, you read first? Yeah. OK, uh, Ms. Kawakami is reading a short piece called uh, Chicken Hell. In Japanese, yes. Niwatori jigoku. Niwatori o ijimeru to ochiru jigoku de ne. Oki na niwatori ga yatte kite, hi o hakikake te kitari, tsutsui te kitari, fumitsuke te kitari suru. Sore ga eigo ni tsuzuku. Oji san o yu no kiite ita. Oji san wa kono atari de ichiban oki na nouka no bunke suji no hito datta. Nouka to itte mo. 開発が進んでほとんどの工作地は売り払い、そこに団地や縦売り住宅がたくさんできていた。おじさんの庭ではヤギと鶏を飼っていた。本家ではもう誰も農業はせずに若い者はみんなサラリーマンになって新橋やら
Okay, this is um, Hiromi Kamakali's uh, same piece um, called Chicken Hell um, in English. There's a hell, the man said, for people who are mean to chickens. If you get sent down there, a giant chicken comes and spits fire on you and pecks you and tramples you with its claws, and that goes on forever. I listened. The man was from a branch of what had been the biggest farming family in our area. Now, though, they were farmers in name only. They had sold almost all their land, and apartment blocks and housing estates stood on what had once been their fields. The man still raised goats and chickens in his yard, but no one from the main house had anything to do with agriculture. The young people all commuted to white-collar jobs in downtown Tokyo to business districts like Shinabashi and Shinagawa. He was raising about 10 chickens. Some were fine roosters with magnificent combs. Others looked worn out and bedraggled. The strong ones peck the weak ones, he told me. I was dying to see the weak ones get pecked, but it never seemed to happen when I was there, no matter how carefully I watched. Instead, each chicken wandered around the yard by itself, quite unconcerned as to whether another chicken was nearby. The man was missing an eye, lost in the war, he said, who wore a glass eye in its place that never moved. Sometimes he'd take it out and show it to me. It was bigger than the biggest marble I'd ever seen and colored a cloudy white. Look here, he'd say, thrusting it out at me in his right palm. He knew I was scared of it. Not long ago, I went to a big art museum and saw an artistic representation of chicken hell. And all that time, I thought he had made it up. An illustration of, 13th century, of a 13th century Kamakura hand, hand scroll, a national treasure. The illustration showed a scaly breasted giant rooster with both wings extended. The man occasionally tormented his own chickens. When he put feet out in their box, they'd all come running. Then he'd kick them away. If he was in a really bad mood, he'd chase them around the yard. His chickens laid a lot of eggs, which he piled up in a bamboo basket. I never got a single one, no matter how longingly I looked at them. When a hen stopped laying, the man always let it live. Just can't stand breaking their necks, he said. I once witnessed him bury a dead chicken in the backyard. Why don't you eat it, I asked. Won't eat them if they die of natural causes, he replied. I haven't a clue what he's doing these days. I stopped visiting him around the, around the time I entered fourth grade, and that was that. A small white building stands where his house used to be, its ground floor rented to an antique shop and a patisserie. Their Mont Blanc cake is delicious. Um, Kao Kamisan writes uh, one piece of these wonderful stories for each issue of the Japanese market business. And the, in the English uh, version that has just come out, uh, it contains uh, 10 pieces of those wonderful stories. In, in many ways, the English version is, is, is uh, superior to the original version. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, Rebecca is going to read, oh, well, Kao Kamisan read uh, Chicken Hell. And Rebecca is going to read a piece called Heaven. I'm sure you would, we, would, we, we uh, had planned on it, but uh, actually we realized that, you know, heaven and hell, the contrast, we realized the cont contrast just five minutes ago. <laughs> so. um, and that's we're also, of course, moving from surrealism to realism. And of well, course, both true. Kawakami and I do both realism and surrealism. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so this is a piece called Heaven. I've been thinking a lot about heaven lately. I've been trying to imagine it. In one version, heaven is a garden, not Eden, but a great big vegetable garden with patches of zucchini and crookneck and summer squash and lots of heavy tomato vines with beefsteak and cherry and yellow tomatoes getting perfectly, perfectly ripe and zinnias and cosmos and lots of other flowers. There's an old lady in the garden. It's sunny out and she's wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt. She's healthy and tan and stooping down over one of these plants. Lying half asleep in the sun on the path behind her is a cat, and they are happy. In the other version, heaven is a big field near a lake. It's early in the day before the sun has risen, and the air is brisk and cool, and ducks are flying overhead. There's a guy in the field, a tall, strong guy with the healthy, clean-smelling sweat of someone walking. He's wearing his duck hunting gear, his waders and corduroy hat and pocketed vest. He's moving toward the water's edge, where he'll shoot a couple of birds to bring home to his family. The lady in the first heaven is my mother, brown-skinned and plump, with a full head of hair. 
the way she was before she turned into the bald, gray-skinned sack of bones she was the month she died. The guy in the second version is my father, clear-eyed and strong and confident, not the sad and volatile, clarity-eyed drunk he was for his last 40 years. I've been thinking about heaven because ever since my parents died, I've wished I believed in some place I could imagine them. I wish I could see the way I did when I was young. Now, the Japanese translation. It's truly, uh, instead of living in my hell, I would like to live in Rebecca's heaven. Yeah. ビーフステークトマト、チェリートマト、イエローカノジョも猫も幸福だ。もう一つのバージョンでは天国は湖畔の大きな野原だ。まだ一日の初め、太陽が出る前で空気は爽やかに冷たく、カモの群れが上空を飛んでいる。野原には男が一人いる。背の高
the book becomes washed in a kind of um, darker palette of surrealism. And I think the gradual shift between a benign world and a very dark, puzzling world is one of the things I admire um, most about the work. And also the thing of um, humor in really unexpected places. Um, both of us also write about animals that are uh, literal or metaphorical. And um, on the one hand, we're, we're giggling at the idea of chicken heaven. And then on the other hand, there's this terrifying thing of this man who, um, uh, if he was a little boy and did those things to chickens, we would you know, send him to a counselor and give him drugs so that he wouldn't grow up and be a, um, a criminal. So there's a, there's a the slip between um, uh, humor and terror and realism and surrealism is one of the things I'm drawn to. Um, and also an ambiguity of the use of pronouns, and this might be something Michael Emmerich could talk more about, but just one little tiny thing in this book that just kind of knocked me out. Um, uh, here's something. Um, the narrator is followed by one of these figures, the figure, this one is a woman. I've never told anyone about these things that come and follow me. This includes my husband, of course. And the this includes my husband, of course, that wonderful ambiguity mm -hmm. is, is it the husband she never told or is it that the husband that's following her? And this wonderful ambiguity of what our life is and what we tell is really throughout the work and it's beautifully done, not gamey, but, but deeply troubling. Well, uh, you uh, discussed uh, the way uh, uh, she keeps going back and forth mm -hmm. between realism and uh, surrealism and between uh, humor and terror. Well, switch the proper names right? and uh, it's about yourself. Well, I didn't mean it to sound quite that egotistical, mm. but yes. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, no. I think there's affinities. Yeah, you, you have great affinity between two, the two of you. uh, thank you so much for your for your for your words. Uh, just as you said, uh, going between realism and surrealism, I I feel the same way when I'm reading your work. Just as uh, Sh Professor Shibata said. 最初に読んだレベッカの作品は体の贈り物。これはあの病の人たちの悲劇、それそして日常を描いたもの。the first book that I read uh, for Rebecca's uh, was The Gifts of the Body, which uh, portrays the tragedies and the, the, the realism of people who are suffering from, from a disease. そして若かった日々、これは自伝的作品です。and the end of youth is not a biographical uh, set of stories. で、そこからあの何冊か読んだ後、読んだのが犬たち。and following that is a, a book of stories called Dogs. And this especially is, is very surreal. あの、犬に飼われている私主人公がいるんですけれども、その主人公が次第に反対に、あの、ごめんなさい、私が犬を飼っているんですけれども、そのそのうちに犬が私を飼うようになる。so first the protagonist uh, has a dog, but then uh, as the story progresses, the relationship switches and the, the protagonist is in fact uh, being owned by the dog and it's a kind of fable or parable. あの、でもその表現の仕方はいろいろですけれども、やっぱりその人生の特別なことは日常の中に実はいつもあるんだっていうことをレベッカさんは言っているんじゃないか。uh, there, she expresses the, these in many different ways, but what uh, is underlying in her, all her stories is that uh, special things are always hidden in ordinary life. あの、だからあらゆることはどこか違うところではなく、ここにあるんだっていうことをすごく感じます。So many things that she describes, it's never out there somewhere, but always here and now. And that's how I feel about Rebecca's work. 
Um, one, I actually have a, a question about the, because last time we met we talked about literature that we loved and that we felt affinity towards, um, and Japanese and, and Western literature. And um, one of the books you recommended to me was uh, Soseki's Ten Nights of Dreams. Do you remember that? Um, and I picked it up and I was rereading it again alongside your stories in here and that sort of um, the seriality of things building on one another. Um, and the sort of, um, uh, th and they are dreams, but there's, even within the dreams, there's realism and surrealism and terror and humor. I mean, the, the guy trying to find enlightenment by killing the monk. Um, and, um, and I know that that was a favorite book of yours. And I'm curious if um, the shapes of that were in any way directly um, behind the creation of this long series of stories? あの、そうですね。その漱石それから日本では内田百軒という人がいるんですが、このあのリアリズムの小説を書きながら非常にシュールシュールであるという二人の影響をもともと基本的に私は受けています。um, it's true that uh, I've been fundamentally influenced by these writers um, who are writing in realism, but also, also at the same time in surrealism. Not only Soseki, but also another writer named Uchida Hyakken. あの、あれなんですね。実はこの話、モンキービジネスの話書くときにワインズバーグオハイオを。Oh yes. Um, when, I, when I was writing uh, these stories for Monkey Business, uh, I was imagining Winesburg, Ohio. By Sherwood Anderson. Winesburg, Ohio is a very realistic story. So that's a very realistic story. But the realism and the I But I was envisioning something that's, uh, that's kind of a mix of realism and surrealism mm -hmm. and something that couldn't be distinguished between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that you say that because um, uh, Weinsberg is, is a kind of a touchstone book for me as well. Mm -hmm. And partly the mm -hmm. grotesques mm -hmm. that begin it are um, characters uh, or, or inventions rather than humans. And I think also in, in both of our work, like in Weinsberg, there's this um, uh, kind of troubling eroticism underneath things. Mm. Um, that people are behaving certain ways but wishing they were behaving other ways, or people that want to behave certain ways that are afraid to. Um, and that erotic pull towards something trouble is, in, I think, in all of those things. Mm. <laughs> レベッカさんは古いあの作家のものを読んで、そしてその中に新しい言葉、古い言葉を新しい言葉として使いたいっていうふうに言っていました。When we spoke in Japan, uh, I remember that you were saying how uh, you wanted to, you, you took from old writers um, new words and how you wanted to invent new words, take from them uh, and invent these new words. それと似たようなことを多分私も思っているんじゃないかと。And I think I also feel the same way, mm -hmm. and I'm aiming for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's also something about um, um, finding archaic words that um, whose meaning has changed culturally, and but then going back and um, examining how it's changed, but also reappreciating the old original words, um, and that was certainly a lot of, um, not my impulse behind writing the dogs, but uh, as I was finishing writing that book, my, my coming to understand it was in terms of archaic words like bestiary, or like eminence, or fortitude, or sufferance, these sort of old Christian words with a new meaning. And I wonder if you could talk about any specific words that, um, uh, that you, oops, that are important to you in that way. Japanese is 
とっても言葉が移るんですすぐに新しい流行ができるんですねつまり若い人が使う言葉っていうのがあります So Japanese is shifting so quickly、um, there are always new words invented especially among the younger generation and I feel that that pace is is very fast で私は今えっと、53歳なんですけれども、私が子どもの時に使っていた言葉は、もう今は子どもは使わないんですね。So I'm、uh, 53 years old right now, and when the words that I was using as a child is no longer used by children today. でも、小説の中には、あえてその自分の知っている古い、古くもないんですけれども、40年前の言葉を使います。But in my, in my novels,、uh, actually, I, I do intentionally use these、uh, kind of archaic,、uh, not so archaic, but maybe 40 years old、uh, <laughs> <laughs> words.、Um, I, I do use that in my novels. So, I was in the middle of the world, and I was in the middle of the world. So, I was in the middle of the world. So, on the surface, it doesn't seem like much of a change, but it, it actually does make a change、uh, when I use them in my novels. <laughs> so, you've drawn the inspiration from older Japanese writers like Soseki and、uh, Hyakken. Well, could you uh, uh, mention some、uh, writers from overseas who influenced you? Uh, not in terms of the words. Ah, the problem is not. Ah, the problem is not. Ah, the problem is not. Ah, the p r o b とってもあのアメリカの小説がたくさん訳されています。So in Japan,、uh, there's a big market for American literature, and there, there are a lot of translated American works. えっと、すごく好きな作品は多いです。There are many works that I admire. 小さい頃、SF、サイエンスフィクションが好きでした。When I was younger, I was in love with、uh, science fiction. あの、エドガー・ライス・バローズ、フレドリック・ブラウン、アシモフ・ハインダイン。Uh, Edgar Barrows,、uh, mm. Robert Heinlein,、mm. Ashmoff,、uh, Friedrich Brown,、mm. Delaney, Bradbury,、mm. Delaney, Bradbury, Bonnegat.、Mm. Bonnegat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a lot of uh, these, these uh, writers talk about New York.、Mm. ゴニーアイランドとかグルーミングデイルが実在しているとは思っていなかったのでした。コニーアイランドとブルーミングデイルが実在しているのは、もうちょっと学生、大学生、大きくなると、ヘミングウェイ・ドスパソスなどを読みました。私が大きくなると、私が大きくなると、私が大きくなると、ヘミングウェイ・ドスパソス。とても好きだったんですけれど、どうもこの。フィットしないところもありました。I really liked them, but there, I felt that there was something that didn't fit. なんていうのかな、その私に揺らぎがなさすぎるというのかしらか。主人公主人公。はい。うん。はい。And、um, I think I'm not sure, but I think it's because in the in the pronoun I there wasn't much room for ambiguity. で。ずっと読まなかったんです、その後。And so when I realized that, I didn't read them for a long time. <笑>でも、柴田さんが訳してくれるものが、突然、あの、よくて。But then I encountered Professor Shibata's、uh, translations, and, and suddenly they became,、uh, I, I started liking them a lot more. あの、オースター、レベッカ・ブラウン、スティーブ・ミルハウザー、エリクソン・ダイベック。So I started reading、uh, more works translated by Shibata, Professor Shibata, such as Paul Oster, Rebecca Brown,、uh, Stuart Milhauser, Steve Erickson, etc. Dybeck. その前にちょっといいかなっていう予感がありました。あのえっとレイモンド・カーバーとジョン・アービングを村上春樹さんたちが訳して。And before、uh, I encountered all of those works, I, I did have an inkling that I would like American literature through the translated works by Haruki Murakami, who、uh, translates Raymond Carver and John Irving. Because in all of these works,、uh, there's, a, there's kind of something missing in, in the eye that appears. ですからそのあの知らない国の話ではなくて自分の話として読める
So I could read these not as something happening in a foreign country, but something that's very mm -hmm. close to me. Mm -hmm. um, foreign literature or, mm. um, I think, um, uh, when I started reading Japanese literature, which is actually quite recent, um, um, part of the appeal was that it hadn't been taught to me. I think one of the things uh, myself as a writer had been about was rebelling against a literary culture in which I did not fit. Um, and so reading writers from cultures that hadn't been taught to me or handed down canonically, this is what's taught in schools or what's funded or whatever was just really liberating. Um, and then even something is going back to a classic like Basho and reading uh, prose and poetry on the same page and autobiography and criticism on the same page. Um, I just, I fell in love with that possibility. I also fell in love with the Shisho Setsu, the eye novel, is that mm -hmm. how you say it? Yes. Um, which again is something about the ambiguity of the eye, uh, um, fiction and autobiography mixing and, and how those things fit together in ways that are were very, very interesting to me, and this predates the American memoir boom, which is really troubling. Um, um, but finding um, tremendous uh, pleasure and joy and affinity in a writer like uh, Kobo Abe, um, and with whom I felt, oh, here's, a, here's another Kafka writer for me to love and admire. Um, or even someone like Shiganoya, finding this incredible, um, I don't want to say Chekhovian simplicity, but what the hell, Chekhovian <laughs> simplicity and, and clarity. Um, and even someone like uh, Kawabata, one of my stories begins, um, when I said I'd give my right arm for you, I didn't think you'd ask me for it, but you did. And so someone cuts off her arm and gives it to a lover, and then many years later I read Kawabata's story, One Arm, and I thought, I, I, I have an ancestor, I, I can fit in, and, and started reading American folklore in which there's stories about right arms. So f finding affinities in places outside of their American mainstream culture I'd been taught. Um, uh, I'm a huge fan of Murakami. Um, and, um, and I'm also a huge fan of sort of pop culture, both Japanese and American, and which is something we share an affinity for uh, 1960s very bad three minute pop songs. Um, and that, and 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 the thing about um, pop music being about this apparently apparent jangly, happy, simple chord structures mm -hmm. describing these you know brutal um, adolescent emotions, and that mix of brutality and sing songiness, I think goes on in, in both of our work as well. Um, well, uh, we've been assigned 45 minutes. I, I think we need 45 hours. Um, <laughs> we take one question, then go on to the uh, second half. Uh, anybody else? Anybody? That's not a very go good way to invite questions. <laughs> Just one question. Yes. yes, please. Why did you choose to translate Nathan and, uh, and uh, As opposed to other books by Thomas Pynchon? Well, other books, most of them have been, uh, had been translated by others and into Japanese, yes. So at that time, uh, that was, that was the, uh, the, the only one available to me. Sorry, uh, it's a boring answer, but uh, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, the, uh, a new translation has just appeared, yes. Okay, one more question, yes. I think the sort of surrealism and, and innovation of magical realism spearheaded by Murakami and, and participated with uh, Kawakami and uh, Yoko Ogawa, et cetera. Um, I think there's a huge appetite for that in the United States. Uh, I think there's a huge appetite for that in the United mm -hmm. States. Um, and I think some of the most interesting American work uh, uh, in postmodernist genre is uh, some of the maximalism done by uh, David Foster Wallace. Um, uh, you know, Thomas Pynchon, obviously, but um, uh, Jonathan Franzen. Is there any sort of appetite for that in Japan? And can you tell me about the difficulties in um, sort of translating these, like, you know, endless clauses? Um, uh, uh, uh. Well, Haruki Murakami is certainly uh, uh, tending toward that direction. The, uh, the, uh, the new book, ni 1984, is a, is a huge book. With, with well, should, no, I, no. should I be answering it? Yes. We're not <laughs> translating. We're not yeah. translating. But also, the uh, uh, I think the uh, in American fiction uh, there is a uh, new tendency in which uh, Ameri the, uh, the the writers are showing uh, the similar 
a tendency uh, where they're very comfortable going back and forth between uh, realism, surrealism, writers like uh, Kelly Link or Amy Bender, you know, these writers. Right. Uh, we have to finish now. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the, the second half is going to be moderated by Ted Goosen. じゃあ、小沢さんが Hi, so I'm your moderator. Uh, my name is Ted Goosen. I'm the co-editor of Monkey Business International. Uh, by the way, uh, we have copies for sale in the back, or you can order them. <laughs> and a quarter of the proceeds will go to the Earthquake and Tsunami Relief Fund, uh, which is being run by the Nippon Foundation, which is uh, the organization which has subsidized the publication of the, uh, of the issue. Um, now, Shibata-san made a joke uh, before that the English version of uh, Chicken Hell might have been better than the original, and as the translator of that story, I can tell you that's not true. <laughs> it, is, it is not better than the original. Don't be modest. No, I'm not being modest. Um, uh, the, the one reason for that, and it's, it's, it's something that the translator of Japanese, and perhaps all translators, have to deal with, is the issue of sound. Mm. How prose sounds. Mm. And uh, this is true in Kawakami-san's uh, writing. Uh, she has a very distinctive sound uh, to her prose. Mm. And it's also true, of course, in poetry. Not just Japanese poetry, but mm. all poetry. Uh, and uh, um, for example, our panelists today, uh, Ozawa Minoru, uh, the haiku poet, and Joshua Beckman, uh, the poet who has been influenced to some degree, as he will, I'm sure, talk about, uh, by haiku and by uh, writers like Basho, each have their a very distinctive voice. So since these poems are short, we thought that we would start by reading the poems. So the way we're going to do it is uh, Joshua will read uh, three of his poems, and then uh, Moto uh, will read the Japanese translation, his translation, and then uh, Ozawa-san will read three of his haiku, and I will read those translations which were done by Moto and myself together. So Joshua. Two new sparrows. The tourists don't know. They're new. And you can read it twice if you want. Uh, two new sparrows. The tourists don't know. They're new. 新しいスズメガニは観光客は知らない。彼らが新しいことを。Cigarettes will kill you. You said it so sweetly. I wanted another. <laughs> I think we got that. タバコは命取りよ。そう君は明るく言って、僕はもう一本吸いたかった。Indians swimming in Manhattan Bay years ago. 
Indians swimming in Manhattan Bay years ago. マンハッタン湾で何年も前に泳いでいたインディアンたち。遠足バスいつまでもこの井出来たる遠足バスいつまでもこの井出来たる A school trip bus kids coming out no end <笑>トンボの絵寂しと言えば笑われるトンボの絵寂しと言えば笑われる I said the dragon flaw drawing was sad And made myself a laughing stock. 春ふかし、机の下に犬のいて。春ふかし、机の下に犬のいて。The height of spring, under the table, a dog. Talking about the weather became trite, which was sad. Talking about the weather became trite, which was sad. Tenki no Hanasio Surnoa, Chimpu Ninata. So there were Kanashi Kotodata. Don't be concerned. Live another week and then be concerned. Okay, don't be concerned. Live another week and then be concerned. Shimpai Surnao. もう一週間生きてそれから心配すればいいよ。So hot tonight, even the cops eat ice cream.So hot tonight, even the cops eat ice cream. 今夜はものすごく暑くて、警官までアイスクリームを食べる。はい。杯をコップに変えよ、春の雪。Sakazuki o koppu ni kae yo haru no yuki. You know, sake cups are very small, right? So, to hell with the sake cup, get me a glass, spring snow. To hell with the sake cup, get me a glass, spring snow. Sake nonde, isu kara koroge, ochite aki. Sake nonde, isu kara koroge, ochite aki. Got drunk. Toppled off the chair, autumn. <laughs> An avalanche of books, far out to sea, a shark. Okay, should we go uh, back and forth? <laughs> Okay, now we're going to change the format just a little bit. So I'll have one. Yeah, you go on. Hum of the universe, I'm trying to sleep. Hum of the universe, I'm trying to sleep. Uchu no shindo, boku wa nemuro to shite iru. 白磁灰の底に眠らん熱き夜は。白磁灰の底に眠らん熱き夜は。Sweltering night. I imagine sleeping in a white porcelain sake cup. Sweltering night. I imagine sleeping in a white porcelain sake cup. Come up from the subway. And there it's just glass. Come up from the subway, and there it's just glass. 地下鉄から上がってくると、そこはガラスばかり。地下鉄の口より祭り、ごろもの子。地下鉄の口より祭り、ごろもの子。From the, sub, from the subway entrance, a child emerges dressed for a festival. From the subway entrance, a child emerges dressed for a festival. Sad story. My shoes sitting at the end of the room. 
and me looking at them. Sad story, my shoes sitting at the end of the room and me looking at them. Now, I was talking with Ozawa san before、uh, we came out, and he said that this poem was written on the tip of the Noto Peninsula, which is a peninsula that extends from the north coast of Japan towards Korea. Summer evening, a shoe from Korea washed ashore. Summer evening, a shoe from Korea washed ashore. Now, as you can perhaps、uh, guess from these last six poems, three by each poet, these were kind of poem response poem、uh, deals.、Uh, Joshua has、uh, published、uh, many wonderful short poems, including this book, which is for sale outside, Your Time Has Come, and several other collections. And,、uh, and as Shibata san and I were translating, Uh, Ozawa san's haiku for today. We also,、uh, Shibata san was also、uh, translating some of Joshua's poems as well, which Ozawa san read and then spontaneously came up、uh, with poems in response. And yesterday, as we were talking in Central Park,、uh, lying on the grass,、uh, Joshua and Ozawa san、uh, developed a kind of a, a, a dialogue, a rapport. Uh, based on commonalities in their approach and even in some of their influences. So I think I'll start、uh, with Joshua.、Um, make your answers, break them sh- into short sections so that I can t- Certainly.、Uh, t- tell me, how do you、uh, come to the types of poems that you write? And, and do you find commonalities or connections between your poetry and Ozawa san's poetry and haiku in general?、Um. Yes, there's so many. Yesterday, we spent、uh, a long time in the park talking about the different、uh, commonalities, the different poets that we, that we appreciated, and the way that we wrote poems.、Um, the first commonality that, that we came upon that I think we both really enjoyed was、um, how we actually write. Poems and on what we write poems, which almost looked identical.、Um, I don't know if you have your notebook with you. Ah, yes, yes, let's pull out the notebook. Yes, the notebook. Almost identical. That we both. Carried them around,、um, said, said more about how I think we are poets. And, and how we want to be in the world as poets、um, than any specific aesthetic thing about, about how we write or, or physically.、Um, In, in the end, yesterday, we, we came to a point where, well, we, we kept talking and we, we got together around noon and we left around 10 at night.、Um, so we decided we'd speak mostly about Basho.、Um, あげていただいて、えー、嬉しかったです。あの、えー、いつもあの俳句は短い詩ですんでどこでも書けるということで、えー、いつもあの書斎でこもって書くんではなくてあの外を歩いている時も歩きながらも書きたいと思いますし、あの昨日もセントラルパークを歩いていて、えー、いくつかあのメモしたりしました。Um, I'm really happy that you brought up the subject of the notebook.、Um, haiku is very short, and so you can write them everywhere, anywhere. 
Um, so I often, uh, I get out of my office and, and go outside and compose while I'm walking. And yesterday uh, in Central Park, I in fact took a lot of notes in my notebook. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
嬉しいですね。それ場所を大事にしていただいて嬉しいです。That makes me really happy、mm. that you, you, you treasure、mm. Basho in such an intimate way. Oh, <laughs> it's、uh, Basho has been、um, very important. I think <coughs> yesterday when we were speaking about, <laughs> about Basho, <laughs> the idea that he presents a way of living as a poet. <laughs> And also, a way of creating poems、um, in an intimate manner that is about、uh, sometimes about sharing individually, sometimes about a social expression,、um, and sometimes about being in the world and witnessing,、um, seeing. Seeing a mix of those different things in your work is so,、um, has been very meaningful over the time that we've,、uh, that we've been communicating back and forth.、Um, it's it's、uh, been very gratifying for me to see the, the work that you do.、Um, Responding to the world、um, in a way that feels so real and familiar to me from so far away. So, this is my. I feel the same way about you. <laughs> <laughs> あの奇跡だと思うんですね、そのえー、先ほどあの、えー、最後に3つの詩をお互いに読みましたけれどもあの、えー、素材も材料もあの、えー、視点も全く違うんですけれども、えー、どこか共通するというか、一番大切なことが。えー、共通するということに、えー、これも驚きました。違う国で、えー、違う環境で育ったのに、えー、同じようなあの詩を偶然に生み出しているっていうことにあの感激しました。Um, I think it's rather a miracle.、Um, Especially in the three poems that we read at the end,、uh, even though the topics are completely different, the perspectives are completely different, there's something that's shared at the core, in the core essence. And even though we grew up in such different、uh, environments in different countries,、um, the, the fact that we share this essence is, and that that's created by uh, 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 something that's,、um, that's it's, it's a small miracle. <laughs> I, I, actually, I, I'd like to, to ask a question. I, I know、uh, the first work of yours, actually, that I read was not yours alone, but it was co written,、mm -hmm. uh, called Nice Hat. Thanks. Thanks. And, and I was so impressed by that.、Uh, it was so much fun for me. And、uh, later I read a description of how it was put together, which was also fascinating. But of course, in Japan and in the tradition of Japanese poetry, There's a great deal of co writing or writing a poem and responding with another poem,、uh, poems which are linked together, like Denku or Denshi、uh, today. And I, I'm wondering is that openness to collaboration something which you take from your knowledge of Japanese, the Japanese tradition, or is it a, a more kind of organic or spontaneous response、uh, to the way that you write poetry? Well, I, I know the, my collaborator, Matthew Rohr, and I both are, we're both very interested in that tradition and spoke about it explicitly and attempted, I think, to make it a part of how we worked and not take on the exact forms of, of the tradition, but to take on the, the nature of it. And, To respond to it, it was inspirational to us、um, more than taking on the particulars of the, of the formal constraints.、Um, 
certainly the social aspect mm -hmm. of what we had read um, excited us so much because mm -hmm. it was different from a kind of poetry that we had that we had heard about or experienced at other times. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so when we each found it separately mm -hmm. and became friends and started talking about the collaborative linked verse, mm -hmm. we, were, we were thrilled to try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, just to give you an example mm -hmm. of, of, of how spontaneous this is, last night uh, Joshua wrote a poem this morning uh, Ozawa-san brought in a poem in response to Joshua's poem, quite, quite, uh, quite naturally, spontaneously. And again, this is a, a part of a very old tradition uh, in Japan, where poetry was uh, composed by groups, and haiku itself was the, in a sense, uh, turning into something independent, uh, the second part of a five-line waka poem. So I'm, I'm wondering, how do you see this uh, this question of, of, of composition and collaboration? Ano, collaboration is important. I, 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 so, collaboration to me is very important. Um, I started composing haiku in college when I was invited to join a linked verse kind of society. Edo時代の文学を専攻しまして、あの江戸時代の文学場所に近づくためには、連句を実作してみないかというふうに。so I was studying Edo period literature at the time, and from my advisor, I was advised uh, in order to understand Basho, why don't you create your own linked verse? Uh, so at, at these uh, kind of poetry assemblies, uh, you would you would read three lines of five syllable, seven syllable, five syllable, and then another person would continue with the two lines, seven syllable, seven syllable, and then that gets repeated, and the first five seven five becomes the haiku, and and I was fascinated by this by this kind of uh, invention. え、その、え、こう作ろうということがあの俳句を作り始める、え、きっかけだったんです。そう、that was いろいろ面倒なルールがあるんですけど、それから解放されまして、あの、先生があの、お酒をついてくれるんですね。So after the 6th uh, verse within the linked verse, it becomes a little bit complicated, but then uh, you're liberated because the the teacher starts pouring out drinks. <laughs> So, so, so actually, uh, I, 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 and that's how I, did, I came to love alcohol and also to love haiku. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm very interested. Why do you think haiku has survived as an art form in the 21st, 20th, and 21st century? I <laughs> know. 何か不思議な力をあの持っていると思うんですね。え、俳句はあの、え、今もあの場所の頃と同じスタイルでえ、ほとんどのものに、え、記号が含まれてまして、え、そして、え、文豪たくさん使います。え、矢とか金とか
、えー、文語を使います、えー、そして五七五でもあり続けている、えー、それをあの作り続けているというのはやはりそういう要素によって、えー、その短い一句の中に、えー、不思議な力がこもっている、えー、そしてその不思議な力があの他の人を救うようなあのところがあるんじゃないかと。I believe haiku has a mysterious power.、Um, haiku has, has、uh, survived into the 20th, 21st century, essentially the same style as it was composed during the period of Basho. It still has seasonal words,、uh, it uses classical, a lot of classical Japanese, especially in the endings, and it still preserves the 575、uh, syllables. And all of these contain within such a short poem,、uh, with, with a very strong power residing in it. I think that. Provides a kind of savior and it becomes a savior of many people,、mm-hmm. saving power.、Mm-hmm. And, and my, my question for Joshua would be connected、mm-hmm. to that. Why do you think haiku has become established and thrived really outside of Japan?、Mm-hmm. Well, I can, I can speak, I think, to the United States and, and how it's, it's thriving here. And I think there are a few different reasons.、Um, The first, the first would be that it's very easy to teach younger people.、Mm-hmm. That,、um, that it's one of the first sort of forms, the first kinds of poetry at all, that people feel they understand confidently.、Mm-hmm. Um, Whether they do or not. <laughs>、um, and I think that there is, I think that's, the, I think that's one reason.、Um, and I actually think that the most important reason that it really stays is because it represents something about being a person in the world, noticing the world. And it does so in a way that feels right to people who create poems and to people who don't create poems.、Um, and I think that has helped to maintain it and will continue to. Thank you. There's a side note. There's a side note. There's a side note. 若い人たちがあの理解してくれるっていうのがあの嬉しいことですね。そのえ日本ではあの高齢のあの俳句愛好者は非常にたくさんいます。あのえ私はあの新聞の選者をやってるんですけれども、六十代以上の俳句愛好者ものすごく、えー、いまして、あの百歳の方まで投稿して、えー、くれて、それは嬉しいんですけれども、き聞きますか。あ、そうです。<笑> I'm, I'm very happy at what you say that、uh, young people actually appreciate、um, haiku because in Japan there are a lot of elderly people who are our fans of haiku and who like to compose haiku. And I work, as a,、uh, select, I, I work in a selecting、uh, committee for newspaper. And most of the people who submit poetry are over 60. And some are 100 years old. Uh, 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 ですけれどもそのあのその辺あのアメリカの若い人たちが愛好してくださるっていうのは大変嬉しいので、えー、その辺の状況について伺いたいと思います。So、uh, in Japan, it's it's very hard to find people under 40 who are interested in haiku, and so I I see it as、uh, kind of my mission to to spread you know the love of haiku. To the younger generation, and I'm, I'm very happy, therefore, to hear that in America there are a lot of young people who appreciate. And I'd like to ask、um, more about that.、Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm afraid we'll have to continue that after the meeting because we just have about、uh, a little bit less than 10 minutes.
uh, for questions. And also, I'd like to thank Hitomi. Hitomi Yoshio has been doing the interpreting. She was doing an amazing job. Wonderful. So we can entertain just a few questions from the floor. Yes. And wait for the uh, microphone to reach you. Hi. So. Hello? OK. Hi. So a uh, quick question about translating haiku. Um, I mean, th th it's a little vague, this question, but I was wondering, when you're translating it, you got how important is it to get the 575 scheme to maintain that, as opposed to just the sounds or the meanings? I don't know. That seems like a lot of no, stuff. No, no. I, I mean, Joshua and I actually, we, we talked a bit about that, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Oh, we don't feel it's important. 575 is a very natural rhythm mm. in Japanese. Mm. If you go all the way back to preliterate times when mm. peasants were singing as they planted seedlings in the rice fields, the songs they were singing were 575 rhythm. Mm. So it's almost like iambic pentameter mm. in English. So it's not really that significant in English to maintain 575, in our opinion. I, I believe, mm. yes. yeah, we agree mm. on that. Any other questions? Yes. Just a second, please. This is going to show my ignorance, but um, I don't know when Basho wrote, so I'd like you to say that. And also, um, I'm surprised because um, as far as in, you say in Japan, it's not the young people, because uh, to Americans, um, the haiku is kind of like an images poem, you know, so you think of like H.D. or William Collis Williams, which makes it very easy. It's, some, it's short and it makes an impression right away. So I would think that would be, like uh, Joshua said, for yeah. young people, it's, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Of course, Ezra Pound, for example, was influenced by haiku and, and translated it. Talk about Basho. Basho was 17 に活躍した俳作家です。バショは、あの、so one of the, the biggest challenges for Japanese speakers is that it uses a lot of classical Japanese, especially in the endings, and that poses a lot of challenges, either to appreciate or to write. Okay. <laughs> So, well, in translation, it's translated into modern English, so it sounds very easy to understand. But in Japanese, it actually, it's written in an archaic style deliberately, using classical <coughs> language. And so it, it, you get a very different impression when you're reading it in the original and in the English. And as a last word on Basho, I'll turn to uh, Joshua. And I would also say that there are many different translations of Basho existing in the, in the United States. And they take uh, the, the kind of language they use is different. So when you look through at different ones, I think one, that's because he's been very, very popular. Uh, and two, it's, it gives an opportunity to try and understand the work and see it in different ways. And that's all the time we have for today, but thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And thank you.